Andrea Tishman. I'm a painter and printmaker, messmaker. focused on trees, particularly these planted groves, coniferous forests. They started out really as studies of light, um, much more kind of abstract, but as I started doing them more and more, and I have been doing them for a year and I'm still doing them for years, um, I became more interested in actual forests themselves. And what's kind of interesting about the groves that I'm depicting is that the uniformity of the trees. I guess it's because it was part of the CCC project. They were all planted but basically at the same time. So there's all these forests or groves of these pines, white pines, um, that are all the same size throughout Massachusetts and New Hampshire where I visited. So it's, it's interesting. It's messy. Um, these are actually on a sanded paper. It feels like fine-grained sandpaper and I um, just use my hands and I rub charcoal and pastel and I kind of layer it. So it's a very physical, gestural um, way to work. I do some sketching, I take some pictures and then, then I come back. It's just too messy and too big to work on site. Unfortunately, I'd love to. And also, you know, I am looking for that moment of light and it takes me a really long time to get there. So, you know, just to keep that exact time of day you know, it's hard. I actually just started some of these trees I'm now beginning to use as subjects for printmaking, which is not something I've done before. It's kind of a nice balance when I've been in this like intense, physical, messy, you know, stage with these, um, these works on paper. It's just kind of fun. This started, these are, many of these are influenced by poetry. They're, most of them pertain to their, you know, metaphors that have been in some of the poems that I've enjoyed, I've focused on pollinators and um, garden friends. With the prints, it's, you know, I do sketches and I draw and it's, you know, it's, it's kind of a relief. Those are fun because it's process oriented. Most of my work is not at all process oriented, which is something that is deliberate but exhausting. So when I can do something process oriented, it's, it's relaxing. I think that what has happened this last year or this last six months has, you know, revealed just how interconnected we are and, and with nature and it's not, you know, trees and us. I mean, it's all, you know, we're all, you know, roommates on the planet. I don't think it's specifically COVID related, but during the pandemic, I started deconstructing them and um, some of my old prints and reweaving them together just to sort of think about marks the way they interact and again this whole interconnectivity in a kind of more literal way this whole idea of weaving and cutting these prints i have been I'm starting one here um, that i've just started exploring and i haven't um but you know carving the paper and it'll eventually form shapes i don't know where i'm going with it i'm just uh exploring it so i was sort of thinking about grains of wood when i was doing it which also to me, it looks kind of like a fingerprint. And I was thinking about recreating that with this, but this is, as I said, it's very formative, so I haven't, I don't know if it's gonna work or not. But I, I like the idea of weaving right now, because again, as I said, I'm, you know, kind of um, preoccupied with the interconnectivity of things, and it is really fun to, to explore that literally. So I'd, I'd like to do something on a larger scale, but again, these are just formative, and I'm not sure where I'm gonna be going with those as well as it just very briefly when this like, you know, I've been doing a little bit more text-based when I, with the outrage was uncontrollable, so I did do some uh, little woodcuts. I had to just get it out. It was, you know, it's been very dystopian in general going through this period for everybody. And it's, you know, initially it was very paralyzing. I'm sh I think a lot of people, it felt almost indulgent to be creative. It was just kind of a weird thing. You felt so privileged to be able to even be thinking about doing something like that. So that's, you know, when I could finally get going again, that's, that's what I came up with. You know, we have to keep making art. It's, you know, it's always really fun when people from open, you know, during open studios, the kind of interaction, you just don't get a chance to talk to lots of different people about your work and see their reactions and hear their perspectives. 
other than in that kind of setting. You know, it's informal, people are relaxed, it's conversational. Since I've been doing these tool paintings, I inevitably get somebody who says, oh, wow, you know, my graph got my grandfather's tools. You know, they'd be perfect in one of your paintings, or my uncle's tools are in my basement. And then they'll come over, like, you know, a week, two weeks, a month later, and they'll drop off the tools, and I often get a story with them. So it's, you know, who used them, and it's great. And then they do find their way into my paintings, and I feel like I almost get to create a little epitaph for these loved tools. So that's been a, a really fun thing. mistake we make is to be, you know, anthropocentric about it and thinking that it's just like nature's here, we're here, and you know, we can enjoy nature, but it's, it's not realizing that it's all one. If we don't approach it as one unit, it's not, we're just going to, the destabilization is going to continue. Trees are the answer. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs>